All right, guys, we have another shoe today that I have been spending a long time trying to get my hands on. And finally, with this drop, I hit it and I feel great because it's in a colorway that I can't imagine being much better for what this shoe kind of is. I think the colorway really blends well with the type of aesthetic and the type of mood and feeling that the shoe gives off. So without further ado, let's get into a very exciting, very kind of uh, avant-garde type of sneaker we're talking about today. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve, thank you for joining us. If you are new here, welcome to the returning subscribers. It's always good to see your smiling faces. Now, today we're talking about a pair of sneakers that is going to be pretty polarizing. You're either gonna feel one way or another, I feel like. It's hard to be kind of in the middle with a sneaker like this one for a lot of reasons, one of which happens to do with the toes, which is just something that you don't often see in shoes, period, let alone sneaker culture. If you know what a tabby toe is, then you already know what I'm talking about in terms of that feature. Before we get into more, let's take a closer look at the Nike Ispa Drifter in the natural colorway, and that's what we're talking about right there when I say tabby toe. Before we get into it, like I said, we gotta first take a closer look. Welcome back. Now that you've seen a closer look of these bad boys right here, welcome to the channel. My name is Steve. On this channel, we talk about sneakers. So if you are new here, consider joining the fam, hitting that like and subscribe, and also check out some of the helpful links down in the description below. Protective shoe spray and cleaning kits to keep your kicks clean. My favorite sneaker books, as well as links to cop these bad boys down in the description if they are available for retail. These ones, unfortunately, are not, but the resale is not going crazy. So if you're here to learn about the resale, I'm telling you right now, you can get these for a good good price. Now, let's talk about the sneakers themselves. This is the Nike ISPA Drifter. And if you're not familiar with what ISPA is, it is a division in Nike, the ISPA, it stands for Improvise, Scavenge, Protect, and Adapt. And it kind of takes this, I always like to say Mad Max Fury Road approach to sneakers. Like It's almost like they, they found materials and scrap materials in the factory and they put them together to, to kind of create these crazy new silhouettes. So when you see ISPA, Think of sneaker innovation, think of material innovation, think of kind of recycled material use and prepare yourself for kind of crazier, modern, avant-garde silhouettes. That is no different than what you get here with the Drifter. Now, the, this particular sneaker does something that you don't often see in the sneaker world, let alone the shoe world, and that is the, the tabby toe, kind of like the ninja toe, if you will. And that is where the, the sneaker itself actually has a, a, a cut through it, and it separates your toes kind of like, you know, like a thong sandal, right? But it's, it's on the shoe. So that leads to a lot of questions in terms of how you wear this thing because socks aren't cut like that, right? So as you can see in the unboxes, it is happening here. This comes with a pair of socks and stupidly, it didn't even dawn on me at first. I was just like, oh, they gave me a dope pair of socks that's right within the color palette. And then, it dawned on me, yes, because it's kind of hard to wear this shoe with a traditional pair of socks. So like, yeah, you get this. There's some nice ASMR for you. So yeah, you get this nice pair of socks right here and it's a, it's a dope color. It goes perfectly with the sneaker. Now, for those of you wondering, can you wear this shoe with a regular pair of socks? The answer is yes. Technically, yes. In my on foots in this video, I, I'm wearing these with a traditional regular pair of Nike dry fit socks. You know, I had to make some room in the front, kind of loosen it up there. And so I will tell you that it is doable. I will also tell you that it's not very comfortable for a very long time, all right? Just in the short, maybe five to 10 minutes I was wearing the shoe to do the on foots and stuff, it started to ache a little bit right there because it's just, it's just tugging on your toes too much with the socks. So I guess what are the solutions? You could buy socks like this, one you got here for free, but you probably want more than one sock if you're planning on wearing this shoe as a more everyday deal. Or you could take older socks and kind of cut the toe right there where you need it. 
I don't know how much that's going to work for you either. You're probably gonna have to invest in some socks if you're going to invest in this sneaker. That might be a drawback. I mean, the aesthetic alone might be a drawback for most people. I think it's kind of dope. I think it's cool to see something different and new. I'm always into that. I also think that, you know, from a first glance kind of general aesthetic purposes, it's not exaggerated. It's not like it's really drawing attention unless you really look for it. So that's a good thing. I think the rest of the shoe does a great job in drawing attention. So as far as the materials here and the construction, I mean, this thing is crazy looking. What stands out the most, in my opinion, of course, is this exaggerated heel counter we have back here, this midsole. This We've seen a lot of sneakers recently that are doing this. A lot of Nike sneakers, the new New Balance, the brand new XC72s are doing this with this very exaggerated shelf-like heel counter going around the midsole here. And this one is ex exaggerated even more by these insert pieces. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the NND, these little inserts here. And this is clearly feels like a recycled material. And then you got this kind of cool mahogany brown, kind of smooth, but visually textured rubber piece kind of wrapping around here, capping off the back here. It feels good, it looks good. This piece, like I said, is definitely kind of a recycled material. And actually on this sneaker, you can see it's peeling off here. And But that's part of the aesthetic. This is not meant to be like super clean and new looking, right? This is ISPA, it's gotta be, it's kind of thrown together, stitched together, crazy, scrap materials, you, you know, improvise, scavenge, protect, adapt, we get that. And you get that from the box, the presentation all the way through. No different with this, these sneakers here. The other kind of striking element of this upper you got some nice cork accents along the top here. This upper in general, the majority of this sock-like upper is this really nice looking kind of basket weave you got going on here. It, it feels good. It's, it's definitely a cotton material, probably like hybrid cotton, polyester, nylon, who knows, recycled, I'm sure, partially recycled at least. It's got a, a lot of nice visual texture to it. It's got a nice feel to it. It's kind of rough, but it's kind of, kind of feels luxurious in a way. It's just a nice kind of look and feel for this sneaker. And then you've got some nice chunky suede here on the eyelets. You've got suede along the top here, embroidered swoosh near the toe. And then these, these cool straps here. So this is, a, just like a cotton durable strap right here on the lateral side it says ispo with the nike swoosh on this side it is blank and what's dope is the way that they've laced it so that the laces go through the eyelets the top eyelet is that back here a little bit offset and then it swoops underneath and it kind of gives it a cool visual effect gives you maybe a little bit more stability and lockdown with the sneaker and then you get a nice thick actually really high quality feeling suede tongue here and on the back, you got the nice smooth leather. You can feel it's it's a legitimate cut of leather, it feels like. And then a cool kind of glossed over heel tab here that says ISPA embroidered. It's it's like a coated, uh, coated canvas or coated cotton material, and that feels nice as well. Makes this easy to pull the shoe on and on, off and on, and you get that on the back as well. And this heel tab also with the ISPA embroidery. So nice kind of glazed, rubberized feel there. Overall, the construction of the shoe feels great, feels solid, and you, you really do kind of experience it in a lot of ways with these different materials and different feelings and textures happening throughout the sneaker. You also get a nice rope lace, nice durable, higher end feeling rope lace. This, this actually does not feel anything like a recycled material. This feels nice and it's got a nice spec pattern, matches this kind of natural patina we got going on here. The colorway is called natural or NTRL. So that's, you can kind of get the vibe by that. And I feel like this colorway really does embody a lot of the ISPA line. You know, when I think of ISPA, I think of kind of this color palette, more of an earthy natural color palette because the entire kind of ISPA design aesthetic to me lends towards this. They do use bolder colors and more primary colors and, and brighter things, but I really feel like this embodies it very well. This patina, this look, these kinds of materials, this is really ISPA in a nutshell, and it's a really good representation of that kind of design ethos and what they try to do, which is why I really, really like this shoe. I think this shoe and the ISPA Flow 2020s are two of the doper ISPA shoes that are not crazy resale, that are easier to get, and you should definitely get your hands on one or the other. If you want more of a cushion base feel, the ESPA Flow does more of that cushion base feel. This feels more like a solid platform. It's a very comfortable platform though. You got a really nice durable rubber outsole here. These knobs look fantastic. You actually have the little uh, uh, Nike recycled kind of sustainable logo kind of built into the tread here on these sneakers, and it's nice, it's solid. This feels good. 
And this is a different type of more stable comfort as opposed to the Espo Flow has a little bit more of the cushy comfort. I would assume that the full foam you're getting in this midsole is probably partially recycled content as well. It doesn't have like a React foam super squishiness to it, but like I said, it's stable. It feels good. One last thing I wanna point out as well, you get some nice perforated trim around the heel collar here. And again, this just lends to this sneaker being really well constructed. I mean, the stitching, the materials, it's, it's kind of heavy, it feels high end, and it feels great. And you know, for the $200 price point that you're gonna pay for this sneaker, that's definitely what you want in a sneaker at that price point. I think it achieves it while also being really striking and visually engaging. Overall, one of the doper sneakers I bought this year and something that is really welcome. Like I, I really am excited to see this on someone else's feet out in the wild. Who knows if I'll ever see someone rocking a pair of these, but if I do, I, I'm gonna be happy to see that. It's gonna be cool seeing people take chances with their sneakers and wear something a little different, something that not everybody's gonna be on. And I think that's going to yield into a, a, a better fit overall for whoever decides to do that. Like this is a really cool addition that you can integrate into your personal style and really make a statement with. As far as sizing goes guys I went with my true size and it worked out perfectly thankfully with these sock uppers sometimes the sizing can be a little bit on the smaller side with this one it fit just great and my true size we're talking the same size I would go with Air Force Ones same size I would go with for like Ultra Boost um, definitely not the same size I would go with for a Yeezy because those are always size smaller so Air Force One Air Max 90 Ultra Boost true size and that for me is the size I went with in this so if that helps if you've got any more questions about sizing and fit guys hit me down in the comments below I would definitely hit you back and that is for me guys on this video of the Nike Ispa Drifter in the natural color way. If you can't tell already, I'm a big fan of this sneaker. I think it's really dope. I think it's different. I think it's everything you want if you're trying to be unique in this kind of everyone copies each other for the hype sneaker culture we find ourselves in. If you enjoyed the video, if you liked this shoe, let me know down in the comments below. I very much appreciate you guys commenting. I try to be the CEO of responding to comments, so I will hit you back. Just drop a comment, give me a little bit of time, and I will hit you back guys for real. Now, if you're new here, please consider joining the family hitting that like and subscribe. I very much appreciate each and every one of you that joined the fam. You guys are the reason that this sneaker channel is great. It grows more and more every day because of people like you, your likes, your comments, subscriptions, your engagement. You guys mean the world to me. I really much appreciate it. Also, check the links down in the description below. Protective shoe spray and cleaning kits to keep your kicks clean as well as links to cop these bad boys. If I find anything, I will have that down in the description below. And with all that being said, have a good day, good evening, good night, whenever you're watching this and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.